Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to Bonner Springs United Methodist Church. Whether it's your first time or your millionth time, we are so glad to have you guys here this morning. And I see some some new faces and some familiar faces, and I'm especially uh, excited about some people we haven't seen in a while who are getting back to church. This is absolutely wonderful. I have some announcements to start you guys off with. I'm Pastor Catherine. We have Andy over here, and Charles is our tech guru. Um, the announcements for you guys, we have our youth mission trip June 28th through July 2nd, and we have Vacation Bible School. That will be July 12th through the 16th. So I just wanted you guys to know those dates. Uh, invite kids, grandkids, neighbors, anybody like that. Also, uh, if you haven't gotten one of these, this is their photo directory. We gave them out during COVID, and so some people weren't able to pick them up. They are on the back counter as you leave, right out there in the hallway for you guys. We are getting back to bridge worship, uh, which is our 6 p.m. Uh, contemporary service. And so uh, today we're going to have a cookout together uh, outside and then do some worship. So if you would like to try that out or if you would just like to join us for the cookout, we would love to have you guys there. And my last announcement uh, is if you are on the visioning team, just a reminder that today we have a meeting from 12 until 2 at the Edwardsville United Methodist Church. Those are all our announcements. And so now we get to sing a wonderful hymn that I love, which is hymn 57, Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing. If you'd stand and sing together with me. At this time, we're inviting our choir forward for us, and they are going to sing with us an anthem that is entitled River in Judea. And is it true this is your last week singing for We want to thank the choir for all the hard work they've put in this year. Can we give them a round of applause?
tell you what choir that was a good note to end on for the year is that c c minor is that the note no. <laughs> i'm kidding uh, i'm the opposite pitch perfect uh, wh whatever that is or perfect pitch okay so okay so i don't even know the term all right uh, a couple of things uh, also uh, i think that was a perfect song to sing on pentecost because i saw i actually saw some like like bodies swaying and feet tapping that's how that's how we move that's how the spirit's alive and moving this morning good well, it is a joy to be with you. I'm now, uh, we have our very own Susan back to do our children's time today. I'm so, you are doing it, right? You look nervous. I'm like, okay, good. Okay. Uh, I'm going to invite our children to come forward.
Good morning. Oh, it's so good to be here and so good to see all of you. Hi, come on up. <laughs> we have a special day today, and I bet you guys don't really know what it's called because it's kind of different. Like, we don't talk about it all the time, maybe once a year. It's called Pentecost. And Pentecost was a time when things really started getting exciting in the Bible. And I mean, it was always exciting, but this was like all this life and energy, kind of like you guys, like we're all kind of like, uh-huh, here we are at church, this is great. And then you guys come out and we're like, yeah, there's the kids, let's go. It's really fun. Have any of you seen the movie Wizard of Oz? You guys are, some of you are a little, too little for that. But you've seen things sometimes where they're in black and white and everything's like, yeah, you've seen that? That's so cool. And you know, it's like all just kind of blah, not really exciting. But then there's a scene where Dorothy wakes up and everything's in bright color. The flowers are popping out and everything's exciting and there's music and laughter. And that's kind of what Pentecost means to me anyway when I read about it, is that all of these people were together and they were all thinking about what God means and what Jesus means and the Holy Spirit came and they all got so excited. And so it's something that we talk about at Pentecost to remind us that we can be excited and we should be excited. Are you guys excited? Are you excited, Candace? That is pretty, very pretty. That is so pretty. Like your unicorn, that's really pretty too. I like that. Do you like that too, Mac? That's pretty shiny and neat. See, that's kind of what Pentecost is. That's kind of what we think about with the Holy Spirit. It comes into us and it makes us shiny and excited. And oh my goodness, I want to tell everybody about Jesus and what a great time it is to be alive. So I want you guys to carry that with you all the time. I know you do. But if the people around you start looking all dull and gray and boring, then you need to perk them up a little bit. Tell them that's the Holy Spirit at work in them. Okay? So you guys, it'll be really fun. I promise. I brought you something to show you. Anybody know what this is? No? It could be a magic marker maybe, or it could be something like that. Well, it's this. Is that exciting? Nope. Doesn't really do much for me. Yeah, okay. Well, what if we do this? Oh, look at that. Ooh, <laughs> you feel that? Let me tell you, Miss Susan likes having this. <laughs> Miss Susan's hot all the time. So that's actually something that is really kind of fun. But it reminded me of Pentecost, too, because I'm kind of funny and weird like that. But it was like not really much going on. But then the Holy Spirit gets in us, and boy, can't we have some fun. Just like that, right? So just remember that you guys have all that excitement inside of you. Show it to us every day and remind us to rejoice in God. You guys have a great week. I'm so glad to be back with you, and I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful week. We'll see you next time. All right, um, so we're, we've got a little break from the normal, um, obviously, since I'm up here. But I am here today. I am Lauren Grant, and I am here to present the Cub Scout Religious Awards. Um, even during the pandemic, we were able to do two classes of Cub Scout Religious Awards. We did a God and Me class and an RP3 class. And so I'm going to call my scouts and their mentors, if one parent mentor wants to come up and then my scouts want to come up. Come on up, guys. <laughs> Say, we, I think one of ours isn't here because they've just recently had a baby sibling within the last week or so. 
Okay, so I'm going to step forward up here so you can get by them. And so I'm going to start with Coraline because Cora did two classes with me. She was an overachiever. And Cora did God and Me. Do you remember what we built? What did we make? A God and Me box. Okay, what, what was that last word? God and Me what box? Exploring box. There we go. We made a God and Me exploring box. And we built a game each week to help us develop a deeper relationship with the Bible and our faith. And so I happen to have a pin for you to give to your dad because he was there with us. And then I have this for Miss Cora. And it is a really cool medal. So if you guys want to give Cora a quick round of applause. And then um, the three that are up here, we've got Coraline, her brother Oliver, and then we've got Silas. And they did another class with me. Oh, hey, here comes the other Silas. Come on up, buddy. He did God and Me with us. <laughs> He's like, wow, timing. You got that one just right. All right, so Silas, do you want to give this to your mom? Because she did class with us. You're welcome. And then this is Silas's medal for doing God and Me. And then I had all four of them do a class called RP3. Now, who here, raise your hand so I can get the microphone, remembers what RP3 stands for? Oh. RP3 stands for read, picture, ponder, and put into action. Okay, so it's read, picture, put into act, ponder, put into action. And each of these kids did a patch called The Good Book, where they got some introduction to how to use the Bible and why the Bible is such an important book for everyone to have and use. So again, they had their parents helping. So do you want to present your parents with their pins? I just have the one that you two can share to give to your dad. There we go. And then each scout gets a patch. There we go. Take your pin. Yep, and so if you guys could give these guys a round of applause. They, they worked really hard this past pandemic, getting to know the, the Bible a little better and working through religious classes with us. So, All right, guys, you can go have a seat. Thank you, Miss Lauren, for that. Now, I really want one of those cool badges. No? Okay, guess not. I probably have to teach the class or wait for Theo or Mac to be ready for that. All right, I get to share our scripture today, and um, not surprisingly, it is a scripture about Pentecost. You'll find this in Acts chapter 2. When Pentecost Day arrived, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound from heaven, like the howling of a fierce wind, filled the entire house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be individual flames of fire alighting on each one of them. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit enabled them to speak. There were pious Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And when they heard this sound, a crowd gathered. They were mystified because everyone heard them speaking in their native languages. They were surprised and amazed, saying, Look! Aren't all the people who are speaking Galileans, every one of them? How then can each of us hear them speaking in their native language? Parthians, Medes, and Elimites, as well as residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia. <laughs> Excuse me. Andy prepared me on these words, but confidence is the way to go. Um, Pamphylia, Egypt, and the regions of Libya bordering Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism. Cretans and Arabs, we hear them declaring the mighty works of God in our own language. 
They were all surprised and bewildered. Some asked each other, what does this mean? Others jeered at them, saying, they're full of new wine. They're drunk. That's the word of God for the people of God. <laughs> you guys seemed a little hesitant whether you wanted to thank God for that one or not. <laughs> uh, will you bow with me? God, we thank you so much for, uh, for giving us this. to guide us, to call us into something new. God, I pray that as we uh, hear your word this morning, God, that we would be open, that our spirits would be open to you moving among us. In your name we pray, amen. You know, sometimes it, lo it takes looking at things from a completely fresh perspective to help us really understand what's what. I don't know about you, but for me, over the course of this last year, I learned a lot about what really matters to me. I don't think I knew how much I liked sharing a meal with friends, for example, until I couldn't just do it whenever and wherever and with whomever I wanted to. I don't think I knew how much I liked being able to walk around and shake people's hands, see their full smiling faces, and greet them with a warm hug until I spent a whole year without being able to do that. I really honestly don't think I knew how important it was for me to be a part of a weekly gathering of people here to sing together, to pray together, and to worship God together, to lift one another up, and to do life with one another. This might sound crazy coming from a pastor, but I don't think I knew how much I actually really loved and counted on church until I had to spend an entire year doing it in an almost unrecognizable way. Sometimes it really does take looking at things from a completely fresh perspective to know what's what. But it really got me to thinking. I still wasn't even uh, without church over the last year, and actually I was pretty far from without church. I was still in book studies and Bible studies with friends from church via Zoom. I was in weekly worship here, albeit most of the time we were in the room shooting component parts of worship with never more than one or two people in here at a time. When Catherine got COVID, our church family brought meals for us. When I was weary and people could tell by my sermons, uh, they'd still check in on me and see how I was doing. Honestly, it might sound kind of strange, but I really loved even the times when I was in committee meetings via Zoom. It really felt encouraging and life-giving to see my friends, uh, to be able to adapt together and work and try to figure out how God was calling us forward together to just be with others committed to doing good and serving God here over the last year. And because of all of that, I was still truly a part of a community, and a community that was doing a lot of good, doing can drives and mask drives, uh, hosting a program, uh, Feed His Lambs, uh, Meets Here, that fed folks homemade meals every single week, uh, gave it to people in need. I was a part of a community that lifted up frontline workers and tried to make sense of our faith, and lift up one another through difficult times when we were all charting brand new territory together. I was a part of a community that was committed to coming together and pursuing God, even when so much felt isolated and divided and hopeless. And it was in that space that I think I remembered what our call truly was. Sometimes it takes looking at things from a completely fresh perspective to know what's what. And over this last year, I think I remembered how important it is what we do here. Church done right is really a beautiful thing. And church done right was really a beautiful thing all the way back from its inception. The scripture we read today was about the birth of the church. That's what Pentecost is. It's the church's birthday. And it is kind of a crazy story. People have tongues of fire on their heads. Uh, they're all in what onlookers think is a drunken stupor, speaking different languages, but all understanding one another nonetheless. This was a crazy, over-the-top, holy moment, one that pierced them to their very core, and one that drove them out to go change the whole world afterwards, to start the church, to spread it far and wide, and in radical fashion. But of course, the story didn't start there. 
just 53 days before this event. Charles, check my math on that. Uh, <laughs> even Jesus' closest followers were watching him get crucified. And then they were scared and hiding out in their homes, only mourning completely directionless. They had so taken for granted Jesus being with them that they had no idea what to do when he was gone, longing for some sort of hope, but completely crushed. Sometimes it really does take looking at something with a completely fresh set of eyes to know what's what. At that moment, they had nothing but those three days in complete misery and hell, and nothing but that could have prepared them for what happened three days later when Jesus rose from the dead. Then, for the next 40 days, Jesus sort of made random appearances to folks until he rose back up into heaven. Just a few days after that, though, people were again in that same spot. Jesus again gone from them, this time maybe not just for three days, but for longer. They were probably wondering what they were supposed to do next. Wouldn't you be wondering that? These people here who had walked with Jesus experienced amazing stuff. God's power on display, someone rising from death. Teachings that had seared them at their very deepest parts then come to life right in front of them. Signs and wonders. And then the one who did all of that was just gone. Not dead this time, just gone. Taken to heaven in a flash. And things would never be the same for them. What would happen next? No one there knew it. That three days that Jesus had been in the grave before, though, that had taught them maybe that God is faithful, that they should hold on for what's next. That God was going to take care of them even when things seemed dark or without direction. But they definitely didn't know how. But Pentecost, this crazy day with flames and ecstatic speech and a party so good that onlookers thought they must have been drunk, this birth of the church that we celebrate today did not happen in a vacuum. God had been preparing hearts of the people there. He had taken on flesh and spent decades emptying himself for others on earth making a way. He had spent years preaching and casting a vision for God's kingdom. He had invited them to know deep down in their spirits the deepest of all truths, if only just a little. And in that moment on the day of Pentecost, they were all connected in a new way, strangely by God's Spirit. And they were given the very power that was in Jesus to go out and build the church in a new way, not inside a building, out and build the church. Church wasn't some tame thing they would come to and sing two or three hymns, smile really nice, shake some hands, hear a 15 or 30 minute message depending on the week, uh, and go on their way. Church, especially this first church service here, Pentecost, was kind of dangerous and scary. They had no formula for it at all. They were out like in the great wilderness. It shook them to their core and turned everything upside down. Listen to how it was described later in on that chapter that Catherine read the first part of. It says, A sense of awe came over everyone. God performed many sun signs and wonders through the apostles. All the believers were united and shared everything. They would sell pieces of property and possessions and distribute the proceeds to anyone who needed it. Every day they met together in this temple and ate in their homes. They shared food with gladness and simplicity. They praised God and demonstrated God's goodness to everyone. The Lord added daily to the community those who were being saved. This is radical stuff. Not only were these people filled personally with a great sense of awe, they also changed their entire lives. These people were selling their property and holding everything they had in common with the people less fortunate than them financially. Like those with resources, just literally sold what they had and gave the money to people who needed it. They went to the temple every day. Do you imagine having to go to church every day? But they didn't do it out of a sense of habit or obligation, but because they were on fire. They demonstrated God's goodness to everyone. These people were preaching and living out their faith with a different kind of passion than ever before. From its start, the church done right has been a powerful thing. And maybe for us, most of the time, church done right has not looked quite this dramatic or radical. Maybe it could, right? But even if not, many of us have still experienced God's grace in profound ways. If you've experienced church done right, think about in your life what being a part of church, not even necessarily this community, just in church, think about what that's meant to you in your life. What has that added in your life? 
receiving God's grace, being in community, having a place of healing, a place where we can know that we're loved and a place that we actually feel okay, having a place that even just every once in a while invites you to experience something truly transcendent. Can you remember a time maybe that you've experienced this in church? Now, if you're listening to this sermon, perhaps you've found a church that does that for you, right? Perhaps you sense God grace, God's grace through worship and community here. If not, and you're just visiting, uh, know that we could be that place for you, hopefully. But there's a good chance that you have sensed that at least somewhat, right? That you've known that at least somewhat, because you're here. Imagine now, though, for a moment, the possibilities about where God could call us together in the future, in a new way, into a new kind of mission, into ministry with our community where we hold more in common with more kinds of people, where we give ourselves like never before, where we don't just do drives for people and make meals for them, but we do life with other people, where we share meals with them, where we share with them our weaknesses and our fears too, and the hope that we have found that overcomes those things, where we feel God's Spirit pierce us to our cores, where we see God move powerfully and loose our chains, and then see God loose others' chains too, outside of our church in our community. Sometimes it really does take looking at things from a completely fresh perspective to know what's what. And I want, you to, I want to invite you just for a minute to do that. I want you to imagine with me now, imagine in your life if you didn't have a community of people who loves you, who loved you so deeply like this church can. Imagine if you didn't have hope. Imagine that the church seemed to you like a place of hurt or shame or guilt. Or if a church represents for you this place that's supposed to be a beacon of God's grace, if it represents for you just the fear of damnation and judgment. Imagine that you didn't have a community of people who would drop everything for you. Imagine that you didn't have a pastor that you could come to when you were feeling down or confused or when your marriage was hurting or when you lost someone that you loved to listen and hold your grief. Imagine you didn't have a church family to write you cards and send you meals when you get a scary diagnosis or lost someone that you love. Imagine that you had to brave those things on your own. Maybe you don't have to think too hard to imagine that, right? Maybe you've been hurt or let down by the church yourself. I know a lot of people have. There are times in my life when I felt like the church let me down. Maybe it was sometime in the past when a church turned you off to the message of Jesus by preaching something hateful or off base. Maybe someone at the church was rotten to you. Maybe you were trying to give this thing another try here, and if that's your story, I really am glad you're here, I, and I hope that you do find a home. But we don't do church perfectly here either, do we? <laughs> Far from it. There were times, even just this last year at BSUMC, that we were scrambling so much to get some logistics done that we could have done better at connecting with folks and checking in. There were times we were so focused on keeping everything afloat that we missed opportunities to make more of an impact in our community. There were times in, in, in my ministry and in my sermons that my own human failings were noticeable in the equation. There were times in the last year that I was stressed to a point where I lost patience or perspective. And I hope and pray that you haven't been hurt by this church or any other church, but sometimes, even with the very best of intentions, we can't live up to our holy calling. So we hold this space here for those who have been hurt by the church anywhere, both within these walls or, or somewhere else. And you, alongside those in our community who aren't here, those in our community who do not know uh, what a loving church home really is, maybe some who need it the very, very most, who don't feel like they have anyone to stick up for them, to call when their partner's hitting them, or to call when they don't know how they're going to go pick up their meds or how they're going to pay for them, to call when they don't know if they're going to be able to feed their own kids or make it another day without taking their lives. I talked to two people this very week, neither of whom live in our community here, but both of whom have been connected to this area in some way. One person, homeless, on her own in this world in the truest sense, just opened up. I, I, you know, I've given this person rides several times, and I said, you know, what's going on? And she said, I'm just so scared. I'm terrified, terrified of what's going to come next living each day just in survival mode, no security, what would it look like for us to actually be the church in a real way to her? Another person I talked to this week, somebody who's transgender, non-binary, 
who had not found a church home for a long time, for a whole host of reasons, who has a deeply committed faith, who is looking for a church community full of love, love that could extend all the way to Purr. What is the good news that we have to offer to people? Is it the good news that if you are mostly middle class enough or enough like us, you can come join our social club? Is that the good news? Worse, is the good news we have to share with others that they are fundamentally flawed and should be ashamed? Is that the good news we have to share? Is it the good news that you have to follow certain rules in order to be saved? That we can take you too in, sure, as long as you become like us or moralistic or judgy or make others feel outside or small. We as a church have an uphill battle to fight to show others what the good news truly is. That it actually heals people who are hurting. That it takes in people who are homeless. That it makes a space for people that don't have a space anywhere else. What is the good news we're being called to share? It's the good news of a God who, made, who was made flesh and who walked with us in our very hardest times, who sought out the very most outcast and undesirable and ate meals with them and loved them deeply, who formed the church with ordinary nobodies and who with the searing fires of the Holy Spirit called those overly religious people into account by dying at their hands and being resurrected to new life and showing them what new life really looks like who offered us new life by water and the Spirit, who brought, low, who brought low the powerful and who exalted the meek, who gave up everything to hold all things in common with us, and who told us to go out and do the same with others, who today is calling us forth to new life. Today we are going to offer you guys a chance to come forward and do something a little outside of the ordinary. And yes, this is kind of strange. Uh, this is, it's during COVID, so if you don't feel comfortable coming up uh, and getting prayed over and anointed, that's totally okay. But if you feel like that's something you want to do and step out of your comfort zone, I'm going to invite you to do that. Uh, we're going to ask God how God wants to use us, us personally and us here in this community. And we're going to take just a few moments together in prayer to create a space for God's spirit to move. We are planning to carve out spaces in this community for what God's Spirit is doing, something new among us. And to tell you about that, I'm going to ask Catherine to come up. Awesome. Many of you know that we have partnered uh, with Edwardsville United Methodist Church. And for those of you who don't know much about Edwardsville, Edwardsville worships about 10 to 12 people. And uh, they're, they're not a huge congregation, but most of the churches in Edwardsville now are very, very small. And yet you guys know there's a lot of people living in the Edwardsville community. There's schools that need love over there, entire trailer court that needs love, tons of people in houses that need love, and a lot of people actually in our stage of life, uh, uh, people who are younger, who are kind of transient in life right now. We feel called to be there, to help serve. We feel that same call in Bonner Springs as well, but some of the things we're thinking about doing over this next year are, are things like figuring out how to uh, maybe host vacation Bible school in, in the field out by the trailer court so that kids can come out and play or have summer fun days so that even if you don't have transportation, there's a place that you can be. We're talking about starting an after-school tutoring program uh, where kids could come to the church and afterwards their families could come and have a meal. And, and there are no ideas that we're not open to because we believe that the Holy Spirit is at work. And, and not just in Andy and I and Charles, like this isn't a pastors have authority thing. It's like some of the best ideas we get are the ideas that God's Holy Spirit has put in your hearts. Uh, and, and so uh, as you come forward today, uh, we're gonna invite you, uh, Charles, Andy, myself, and Michelle will be uh, spread out. I'm gonna have uh, myself and Michelle, we're going to go to the back two corners, and Andy and Charles will be in the front corners, and only if you're comfortable, we will all wash our hands with Purell before this and wear a mask, but we invite you forward to share something you'd like prayer for. We need the Holy Spirit to enter into us to change the community, but also we have certain areas in our life where we feel like we need a breakthrough, uh, so we'd love to pray over those things with you, and then we'll anoint your head in the sign of a cross, again, only if you're comfortable, and if you're a kid, uh, and you want to come to me, I have a little blessing that I can give you too. Uh, God uses all of us, especially kids, to do amazing things in this world. 
Um, so I invite you at this time yeah, to come uh, forward. Oh, just one more, uh, just one more point of business. Uh, say your name also as as we're getting ready to anoint you. Even if you think we know you, it, it'll be helpful so we can pray for you by name. So, thank you, Andy.
We're coming out to that time in our service in which we're able to lift up concerns that we have for people close at hand or far away. A number of concerns that I'm aware of today start out with a joy. Today is Lyra and Robert Farrico's 43rd wedding anniversary. Congratulations. What? 40th. Oh, okay, okay. I read that wrong. 4040. All righty. Uh, some other concerns. Judy Shelton's asking for prayers for her good friend, uh, Ellen Hoskins. She had brain surgery about a week ago. Saturday, Saturday is, not, is not doing well. Hospice has been called in. Prayers for Barbara's uh, sangster sister, Susan. She has some more cancer concerns. Roy Trickle had a heart cath this last Friday, and it came back very good. So we rejoice for that. And jo Joanne Van Bieber is at home now, but she's still continuing to have some medical concerns, particularly for her legs and feet. Uh, for Lisa Curry's dad's fellow worker, Todd um, Horde, I believe his name is, has COVID-19, has been on a ventilator, and is C in CCU. And also, last week we got a, a prayer card from a Cheryl, Cheryl, and we're not sure who she is, but anyway, she was asking for prayers for a baby, Landon, Landine, something like that, who was born at one pound, one ounce. That baby needs our prayers. Let us take these, our public concerns, along with our private concerns to Almighty God in a time of prayer, and we'll close with the Lord's Prayer. Almighty God, you know what our concerns are. The ones that we've lifted up down here as we came forward, the ones that we shared as we sat in our pews, the ones that we've listed here, and many, many more. We ask you to reach out and touch each person whose lives we are, are talking about here, each concern that's been mentioned this morning. We pray that you will heal those who need your healing. Rejoice with those who are rejoicing. Be with those who need your guidance. Reach out to those who are uncertain. Reassure those who are lost and, uh, and need your reassurance and your power to continue on. Be with our church as we seek to reach out to our community, to uh, the Edwardsville community, to all those who need to know of your love and your concern. And we give you thanks, Lord, for all the blessings you've shared with us, the fact that we have survived this past year, and for those who did not survive this past year. Hear all of these, our concerns, as we voice them, and also hear us as we attempt to pray that perfect prayer which you have taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As you are leaving this morning, there will be an offering plate on the back, someplace back there, that you can drop your offerings in. We very much appreciate that. Uh, that. It takes money to make this whole operation go. And for those who are watching online, we appreciate your donations as well. There should be a link in the comments sections as to how you can also serve the church. All righty. Let's see. I think we're ready to close. There's a, one special hymn in our hymnal that really lifts up Pentecost Day. And that is We Are the Church. It's number 558. Is that correct? Yeah, there it is, 558. Uh, we're going to sing verses 1, 2, 4, and 5. So skip verse number 3. Let us stand as we are able and let us join together. And there are actions with this song and there can be dancing with this song. If you want to do it, go ahead.
Amen, amen. I invite you now to receive our benediction. God, as we go forth from this place, uh, shake us up a little bit. Uh, remind us that you do have things that make us uncomfortable, visions that you are calling us to right now. But God, also help us find our comfort in our home in you. Transform us so we can go out and transform the world. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Amen.